Well, it's time to talk politics this week. We're joined by the one and only Joe Hildebrand. Joe, welcome to the Ben Rock and Robbo Show. Woo! It's so good to be here. Oh, my God, I've got this strange sense of deja vu. I can't quite put my finger on it. <laughs> yeah, what would that be? Well, actually, Joe, I've got to say, I've poured goo over your head. Uh, I've made you get a you prostate have. exam live on air, and yep. I've even made you do right. a live nudie run in front of Ida Buttrose. How the hell are we still friends? Yep. Mostly the prostate exam um, <laughs> actually turned out to be. This was one of my. For me. This was one of my most favourite things you ever did on the show, and I remember yeah. us having a discussion where you. I said you've got to flash them, and you said I can't get my knob out in front of Ida Butcher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I, I find it troubling that you're the expert <laughs> executive producer and that I'm the one who has to tell you these things. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, I kind of feel like that, the that's a conversation that's kind of the other way around. <laughs> uh, uh, it was good TV and that's all I ever cared about. Great now, look, gold. T TV gold. They're still talking about it. <laughs> now, mate, you have kindly agreed to join us for our special presidential election coverage next yes. Wednesday. Yes. But I wanted to get your thoughts and predictions on the race. Let's have a look at a graph that we've got. This is the state of play according to the polls with Biden claiming victory. Do you think Trump can pull out the impossible and win this thing? <sighs> Look, someone asked me this the other day and I pulled out my favourite quote from Brian Schmidt, who is uh, Australia's uh, Nobel laureate. He's a super genius. Uh, he's a, the vice chancellor of ANU, I believe. He's a Nobel Prize winner. He's an astrophysicist. He's, you know, the smartest man by a country mile that anyone here is ever likely to meet. And I once asked him if he believed in God and he said, I'm a militant agnostic. And I said, what does that mean? He said, I don't know, and neither do you. <laughs> and, but you, and to be you honest, did I, say th that, that is the only that is the, <laughs> Yes. You said that Go Trump on, would yeah. win. Uh, well, the, it's look, to be honest, it's just one of those things where, I, you know, like everyone else, I looked at the polls and I said, there's no way he can win. And then privately, I was telling people, oh, my God, I think he might win. And and there is this great cognitive dissonance with Trump. I mean, in a way, he sort of causes it. But it, it is certainly true that um, in 2016, all the polls suggested there was virtually no way he could win, um, albeit there was a, a, a small sort of, you know, a small chance. But, um, but everyone was, you know, basically everything would have to go his way it'd have to be sort of miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle and he pretty much got that i mean he got those razor thin margins in the the rust belt seats in the midwest in places like pennsylvania um and michigan wisconsin um but uh but and, and then the question is whether or not he can do that again and i suppose to quote george w bush fool me once shame on you fool me twice uh, um 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 don't do it again. <laughs> Fully dry, shame on me. And, and there's just so many variables. And, and I think it's very, you know, again, to bring it back to Brian Schmidt, I think anyone who says that they know what's going to happen is a liar. Hmm. Can we talk a little bit about tactics? Because, you know, towards the end of the last election, Donald Trump really hammered down with Hillary on those supposed emails. You know, we've yeah. just seen this latest debate and there really didn't seem to be any knockout punches. I, yeah, I think that certainly the, the feedback from the first debate is that Donald Trump was too aggressive and and kept interrupting Joe Biden, even as Biden was sort of struggling to to make sense or getting a bit lost and confused <laughs> in his own answers. And so people, even people on Trump's side, Trumpists, were saying, why the hell are you interrupting this guy? He's, he's making a fool of himself. Just let him talk. Uh, so I think there was that. There was obviously just the the um, the dismay uh, from both sides about just how combative it was and how rude it was. And, and Biden was sort of goaded into being a bit uh, rude himself, which doesn't suit him at all. Although it's fair to say it was pretty pretty highly provoked. So, Joe, uh, one thing that uh, the Trump camp loves, and that is a Joe Biden gaffe. He did another one overnight. Let's have a look. <laughs> The character of the country, in my view, is literally on the ballot. What kind of country we're going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where, if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. Yeah. 
Oh, he's so mm. cute. Does this hurt Joe Biden? Well, he is. And, Look, and I, he saw his wife there kind of go, uh, you could see this, the, the, there was a shake yeah. in the eyes, very minimal, but... <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, look, I, look, I think it's it's almost definitely fair to say that there's been some kind of, well, it certainly seems there's been some kind of cognitive decline if you compare the Biden of today to the Biden of even just a year ago, where he's a far more um, formidable uh, orator and and far better at, at punching his points through. But I'm not sure how much it really hurts him. I mean, Biden's whole image is the kindly, uh, lovable grandpa who will just sort of put his arm around America and make it all better and, you know, put a Band-Aid on its skin knee and get back up again and we'll pretend this never happened. So he's not a, um, he's not sort of a, a, a smug or pugnacious kind of candidate. So Sure, but would they so, have been better of going with Harris or is Biden their best chance at winning? Just quickly, Joe. A thousand percent Biden is their best chance of winning. If they went with Harris, I think they'd almost definitely lose. Perhaps not the popular yeah. vote, but I cannot see how she would resonate in those uh, Rust Belt seats in the Midwest. I cannot see that at all. Okay. Well, look, Joe is joining us for special coverage of the US presidential election results next Wednesday from 9.30am on Ticker TV. Joe, it's so fab to see you again. Thanks for this. So man. good to see you all again. Love you guys. Take care. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> it's a Ben, Rob and Rob, oh, Ben, Rob and Rob, oh, Shen, Rob and Rob.